In this video, we're going to examine and discuss the YouTube video titled Global Warming Over the Last 16 Years. It was created by the blog Skeptical Science, which is a website run by advocates of human-induced global warming. That video by Skeptical Science contains a major blunder, a fatal mistake. In their video, Global Warming Over the Last 16 Years, Skeptical Science begins with a statement Quote, Mankind has continued to warm the planet through greenhouse gas emissions over the past 16 years. End quote. Curiously, they make that statement as if it's fact instead of a hypothesis. Skeptical science goes on to present a graph of global surface temperature anomalies starting in 1880. Then they focus on the last 35 years, stating, quote, the last 35 years shows a significant increase in global temperature. However, the rate of warming is not uniform. There's a lot of variation from year to year. End quote. Now that's very true. There's lots of variability. And skeptical science provide reasonable explanations for the annual variations caused by natural factors. First, they discussed volcanic aerosols and their cooling effects. Next, they present the impacts of El Nino and La Nina events. Quote, Ocean cycles such as El Nino also affect temperature. El Nino years tend to be warmer and La Nina years cooler. End quote. The key word in the second sentence is tend. El Nino years tend to be warmer, and La Nina years tend to be cooler. But as you will soon see, El Ninos and La Ninas do not have opposing effects on the sea surface temperatures of the global oceans. And as a result, El Ninos and La Ninas also do not have opposing effects on land surface air temperatures. Back to the Skeptical Science video. After discussing the reasons for the annual wiggles, they then once again make the bold statement, quote, The longer-term warming trend arises from greenhouse gas warming driven by human emissions. End quote. The skeptical science video then moves into the phase when they attempt to remove the year-to-year -year wiggles caused by the natural factors. They state, quote, First, we remove the cooling effect of the volcanoes, along with the smaller effect of changes in solar activity. End quote. You can do that with sunlight-related influences, like variations in the solar cycle and the shading effects of volcanic aerosols spewed into the stratosphere by explosive volcanic eruptions. They change the amount of sunlight reaching the surface of the planet. Those variables also change the amount of sunlight that penetrates the oceans and warms it to depth. There's still a lot of debate about the time lag associated with the effects of the solar cycle on sea surface temperatures, and because the effect of the solar cycle is so small, it's typically ignored. A side note. Radiation from the sun is also known as downwelling shortwave radiation and penetrating solar radiation. The latter name, penetrating solar radiation, because it can penetrate and warm the oceans to depths of about 100 meters. The strength, of course, of the penetration and warming weaken with depth. On the other hand, Infrared radiation from greenhouse gases is known as downwelling long-wave radiation. It can only penetrate the top few millimeters of the ocean surface, and it's at the surface where evaporation takes place. So keep that in mind when you see the dips and rebounds caused by volcanoes. Those dips and rebounds are caused by changes in sunlight or penetrating solar radiation which is not the same as infrared radiation from greenhouse gases. Moving along. Now for the blunder by skeptical science. They state, 
Next, we remove the pattern of warm and cool years caused by El Nino and La Nina. End quote. That's the mistake. Try as they may, they cannot remove the effects of El Nino and La Nina events from the global surface temperature record. El Nino's and La Nina's are an integral part of it. More to the point, El Nino and La Nina events are the natural processes that caused the long-term warming of sea surface temperatures of the oceans. And in turn, they're the primary natural processes that cause the long-term warming of land surface air temperatures. Keep in mind, the vast majority of the warming of land surface air temperatures is in response to the warming of the global ocean. Then you've got all of the man-made factors like land use changes, the much debated heat island effect, poor locations of surface temperature sensors, overzealous corrections to the surface temperature record, black carbon on snow, and man-made greenhouse gases. Speaking of man-made greenhouse gases, there's no evidence that man-made greenhouse gases were responsible for the warming of the sea surface temperatures of the global oceans. That, of course, is the intent of this video, to make you aware of that fact. Here's a brief introduction. For the initial discussion, we'll be using the best sea surface temperature data set available from NOAA. It's made up of measurements from satellites, buoys, and ship inlets. It gives us more than 31 years of excellent data. If we look at a map of the warming trends of global sea surface temperatures since 1982, we can see that the surfaces of the oceans did not warm uniformly. There was no warming in the eastern Pacific Ocean. But the sea surface temperatures of the Atlantic, Indian, and West Pacific Oceans have warmed. Let's confirm that by plotting the sea surface temperature data for those two regions in a couple of time series graphs. First, the East Pacific Ocean, from pole to pole, covers about 33% of the surface of the global oceans. Sea surface temperatures there haven't warmed since the start of the data set 31 years ago. The Atlantic, Indian, and West Pacific, again from pole to pole, make up the rest of the global oceans. Sea surface temperatures there only warmed in response to strong, naturally occurring, naturally fueled El Nino events. That is, without those strong El Ninos, which are Mother Nature's handiwork, the sea surface temperatures would not have warmed for the other 67% of the global oceans. And the ocean heat content data for the tropical Pacific indicates El Nino events are fueled naturally. Back to the skeptical science video again. In reality, they're only removing the El Nino and La Nina effects in the East Pacific Ocean, where the data responds proportionally to El Nino and La Nina events. But the sea surface temperatures there haven't warmed in 31 years, so who cares? Skeptical science cannot remove the effects of El Nino and La Nina events from the Atlantic, Indian, and West Pacific Oceans because the sea surface temperatures there do not cool proportionally during La Ninas that followed the strong El Ninos. Here's why. This is the simplest explanation I can provide to you. A strong El Nino can take a huge volume of naturally created warm water from below the surface of the tropical Pacific and relocate that warm water to the surface. Before the El Nino, the warm water is excluded from the surface temperature record. During and after the El Nino, it's included in the surface temperature record. In effect, it provides an instant warming. The warm water that's now on the surface does not magically disappear after the El Nino. It simply changes location. It first warmed the East Pacific. And as it sloshed back to the West, 
sea surface temperatures for the Atlantic, Indian, and West Pacific warm. And they stay at that new temperature. That's why the sea surface temperatures for the Atlantic, Indian, and West Pacific Oceans do not cool proportionally during the La Nina events that followed those strong El Ninos. All of that leftover warm water from the El Nino that's on the surface of the Atlantic, Indian, and West Pacific counteracts the effect of the trailing La Nina taking place in the East Pacific. This prevents land surface air temperatures from responding proportionally to the La Nina event. That's how the sea surface temperature data for the global oceans indicate they've warmed, naturally, not via greenhouse gases. Skeptical science doesn't consider that natural warming of the global oceans in their video. They elect to continue to present myths about man-made global warming. That's their choice. What's your choice? Are you going to believe the data? Or are you going to continue to believe an obviously flawed hypothesis of human-induced global warming? For more information, refer to my illustrated essay, The Man-Made Global Warming Challenge. It's free at my website. Y'all have a nice day.